Game time at the Cap Center in Landover. Let's take you back to Roger Twibell and Dick Vitale. Thank you very much, Greg, and welcome back to the Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland. Dick Vitale, John Andres alluded to the fact that Kevin McHale has largely been ineffective off the bench. He hasn't had a lot of shots. Why has Kevin not been in the flow of things? Number one, Roger, it's because of the pace of the game. Kevin is an excellent transition player who wants to run up and down the floor. Four. And I have to disagree with my buddy John Andres. I think the reason he's not scoring is simply tempo. The Washington Bullets are a team that slows it down. According to Gene Shue, their coach, he would really like to play an up-tempo game, but he can't. Personnel dictates that. He has the kind of personnel with the physical intimidation and the slow people across the front court that he can't just go up and down. And there's a look at Casey Jones, my choice as coach of the year. Gene Shue, 35 and 47. I think he He's just got to be happy to be in the playoffs. His assistant, Bernie Bickerstaff, who originally came to Washington with Casey Jones when Casey was head coach for three years here. Just underway, Ballard matched up on Bird, Mahorn on Maxwell, and that's a before and after shot if you ever had one. Max misses and Rulin the rebound. Keep in mind, Rulin and Mahorn, the number one rebounding duo in the National Basketball Association with Bird and Parrish just six rebounds high. They were able to get the ball inside with no problem at all, but Maxwell didn't convert. Mahorn, who had 14 points and 15 rebounds in Saturday's win, not hesitant about that shot. They decided to go right at Larry Bird and make Bird play defensive basketball as he's checking Mahorn. They're going to go to him a little bit more today. Gene Shue alluded to the fact that he felt Bird could take a vacation guarding Mahorn. Blocked by Ballard. Ruland comes up with it. Larry Bird's an excellent defensive player, Roger, away from the basketball. He doesn't play his outstanding defense when he has to check the guy playing the ball. Henderson and Frankie Johnson matched up out front. Maxwell comes over to double team. Traveling ball. Good pressure that time by the Celtics. Excellent double team basketball, which tries to create a faster pace. Whenever you apply pressure on a basketball, it takes teams away from running their offense. There's the double team, good pressure. He drags the pivot foot. Hugh Holland's right on the call. Hugh Holland's John Vanek, the official, Wally Rooney, the alternate here. Bird, the foul line jumper. In and out, tipped around, and Rulin has the first three rebounds. So far, the first three possessions, Roger. They've only had one shot. Boston not able to get that second shot with Rulin around the glass. Whistle out front as Dennis Johnson commits the foul on Ricky Sobers. Sobers and Gerald Henderson having a few words. Henderson not allowing him to intimidate him. Calm down, Gerald. We're in the first three minutes. We don't want any fight. Ballard, the captain of the Washington Bullets, inbounds to Frankie Johnson. Sobers into ruin. Ballard, the running right-hander, and Parrish, the rebound. Parrish did an excellent job defend, defensing Rulin in that series there, Roger. He played behind him, not three-quartering him. If you try to play three-quarter defense on him, he'll drop step and get the inside layup. They doubled up on Parrish. They swing it to Dennis Johnson wide open. He hasn't hit a shot so far in this series. Loose ball, and it's going to be a foul on Dennis Johnson, so he picks up two quick fouls. And I mentioned DJ, just 15 of 44, Dick, coming into this game. It doesn't surprise me as we look at Casey Jones. DJ is not a good perimeter jump shooter. You have to play off him and allow him to shoot that perimeter J. He's an excellent rebounder on the offensive boards for a guard, and he gets a lot of baskets in transition. Boston has missed their first four shots. Ballard wide open underneath. Ballard, excellent movement without the basketball. Nothing like great motion, Roger. Whenever you move without that basketball, you create a dilemma for the defense. Doubled up on Parrish again. Sobers takes it away. Quickly to Frankie Johnson. Rulins the trailer. And a timeout. And bullets. They better get a timeout, Casey. This team is fired up and ready to play. out on the floor 9 14 left to go in the opening period the bullets six the Celtics nothing so far Boston 0 for 4 Washington has hit three out of four and at this pace Washington would win 104 to nothing if this continues this way Roger it's very important for Roger 
uh, Roger, it's very important for Washington to establish the early lead. They do not have a catch-up kind of basketball team that can go out and press you and come from behind. Maxwell will take the outside shot. He misses, and once again, good job by Washington as Rulin really positioned himself well to keep Parrish away from the boards. They haven't gotten a second shot yet, Roger. They're really keeping him off the glass. They're trying to isolate Rulin. Inside to Mahorn. And Mahorn and Bird had hooked up inside. The foul's going to be on Larry Bird. You know, the Bullets had complained through the first three games, and the officials were not calling fouls against the Celtics. The Celtics have been to the foul line 30 more times than the Washington Bullets. Maybe they've got a point. Roger, the Celtics go to the line a little bit more often because they play at a quicker pace, and there's a tendency for that to create some fouls on the floor. Sobers drops it off to Mahorn, and traveling is called. Hesitation by Mahorn. They need more scoring out of Rick Mahorn. He's got to be much more effective offensively to the tune of at least 13, 14 points a game, Roger. He can't go and get seven or eight for them to win a basketball game against the likes of Boston. Oh, they're really ganging up inside in a whistle. Foul's going to be on Ballard as he was holding Maxwell. Right now, if you were to chart the running game of Boston, they have not had <laughs> not one fast-break right? transition basketball, and we know that Boston loves to run with the ball. Parrish hits the turnaround shot. Robert Parrish, who in the first three games of the series hit just 14 of 37 from the floor. Now we see the full-court pressure. They're going to apply a lot of pressure. Look for Henderson to do a little doubling up. There's Bird stepping out. There's the double team, which creates a situation to get the ball up the court a little bit quicker. And Mahorn almost with the double dribble. That's what they want to do, put the situation in the hands of a Rick Mahorn outside as Ruin hits the shot. Jeff Ruin, his second hoop. Ruin has really developed a 17-foot jumper to go along with his driving game, and that makes him so effective. Once again, Sobers with the double team. But this is, this is something the Celtics want to try to do, is get the ball up quickly. And they did that time, but they couldn't finish it off. Sobers is a street fighter, came out of the Whit Clinton High School in New York City, where he did not play high school basketball. In fact, Louis Chappelle of the New Jersey Nets was responsible for getting him to go to uh, Southern, Idaho. Southern Idaho, and that was through the uh, recommendation of Tiny Archibald. Parrish. He hits. Robert Parrish now has hit his first two shots. Roger, I told you earlier today, I expected a big night out of Parrish. I think he's going to get his ball down inside. They're playing behind him. And we know he's basically a good shooter. He just has not been able to let the ball has not been falling for him. That's right, folks. Dick did. That's a fact. Dick did tell me before the game that Parrish was going to have a good night. We'll see. He scored all four of Boston's points. And it's 8-4. Sobers will take the three-pointer. That's just two. He misses. And knocked out of bounds. And... It's going to be Washington ball, and I think Gene Chu could have had a good case for Dennis Johnson over the back of Ricky Mahorn on that. DJ with two fouls already. If Boston has a weak part of their game. They really don't have a strong perimeter shooting backcourt, and they really lack a penetrator, a guy to come manufacture and create shots on the floor. Stolen by Gerald Henderson. Bird has it in the middle. To Maxwell on the wing, and they're going to call an offensive foul on Cedric Maxwell, and that will be questioned vehemently by the Boston Celtics. I question the call. John Vanek right now is going to make the call as the lead official, defensive player. Was he stationary? John Vanek says yes, and that's the only vote that counts. That will be just one contact of many contacts made this evening between these two teams. Steal by Henderson again. Henderson's a very active player, extremely quick. Did a good job cutting off the passing lane, not allowing the ball to get into the 15-foot range where they can initiate their offense from the wing. Ruined outside. He misses Dennis Johnson, the rebound. That's one of the great assets, the skills of Dennis, that he gives you a multi-dimensional player and that he can rebound from that guard slot. Bird in the lane. Nice cut that time, and he draws the foul going to the hole. Watch Bird set up the defensive player and use the screen of Parrish. There he is now. He bumps him on that screen. He gets real tight so the defensive player cannot get around the screen. Ballard is definitely lost because of the great movement. What made that shot available, Roger, was that he rubbed as tight as possible to the screener so that the defensive player could not slide through. Larry Bird, of course, one of the top free throw shooters in the league. And Dick, he really finished up superbly this year. Over the last seven games, averaged better than 25 points, 10 rebounds, and six assists. 
Roger, I said to everybody out there who's banging a typewriter, making a case for Bernard King, making a case for Dr. J, making a case for Isaiah Thomas, Adrian Dantley, put that case away. The MVP of basketball has to be Larry Bird. In every phase of the game, he has been brilliant this year and missed the consistency. 8-6, two-point bullets lead. Rulin has it down low. Bird blocked it. Rulin so strong, he got it up anyway. Now the Celtics are pushing down in a hurry. Bird has Henderson wide open. Gerald, who hit 11 of 15 in the first game, misses Maxwell, the offensive board, and in. Cedric gets inside position. That's the first offensive board for the Celtics tonight, and he convert it and get a score. Celtics have ripped off six straight points. That time, Casey Jones is up. He wanted full court pressure on, and his players forgot about it, and we're down at the other end. They're trying to play a little two-man game with Rulin and Sobers. If they double down, they're going to kick it right back to Sobers. Traveling called. Bird did a fine job to get in and cause Frankie Johnson to change his stride. That's where he's effective, Roger. He's really effective coming from the help side defensively from the weak side. There's Larry Bird giving you help side defense. He steps out. He creates the turnover by giving help. He has a tendency to steer at the ball a little bit and is not effective when he has to reverse back to his man on a strong side. Parrish, a good job to get it to Henderson. He puts it up with the left hand, and he draws the foul. That time, a good look by Robert Parrish as he was triple teamed, Dick. Parrish draws a lot of people around him when he gets the ball down in the post. And he caught the cutting Henderson and took the ball strong to the basket. Foul was on Rick Mahorn. That is his second. Now, the Bullets don't go very deep on their bench. And it's a young bench at that, with the exception of Tom McMillan. They have Jeff Malone, as you mentioned, a young guy coming off the bench. He's had a learning experience, made the all-rookie team. But this year, it's been a mismatch. It was Ralph Sampson in a very mediocre rookie cla class. I wasn't really impressed, I don't know about you, with the all-rookie team that just was selected. Well, you had Wiggins, Steve Stabonovich. Stabonovich, I think, came on well at the end of the year. I think Byron he showed Scott made improvement. It. Celtics now with the lead as they've scored eight straight points. Whistle out top. Foul's going to be on Parrish. That is his first foul. And fourth team foul on the Celtics. We've got a timeout on the floor with 5-18 left to go in the opening period. The Celtics, who at one time trailed 6-0, now with a 10-8 lead, we'll be back to the Cap Center and Landover after this. So Dick Vitale back with you at the Cap Center. Celtics lead at 10-8. As you take a look at the season field goal percentage and the playoff, you'll see that Robert Parrish and Dennis Johnson uh, have had some difficulty putting the ball in the hole, especially Perry shooting 54% of the regular season. That's the big difference. But remember this, Roger. He gets a lot of baskets in transition because he's the, probably the best running center in the NBA who really operates the secondary phase of their running game. As we look at the Bullets Meanwhile, stats. the Bullets, Ballard shooting is down. Mahorn is way up. Rulin is way up. Sober is just about the same. And Frankie Johnson doing a good job putting the ball in the hole. He's learned a little bit more about shot selection. I remember when he came in as a rookie and he was shooting all those three-point attempts in his series against Boston and he finally had to learn a little bit even though he scored some big numbers he really didn't know what a good shot was and he had a tendency to play a little bit out of control I like this guy Ballard he's just a tough competitive player last five times down the floor Washington has turned it over twice and they've missed three shots and the Celtics have ripped off eight straight points Sobers takes the outside rainbow and he hits it Sobers a real veteran bounced around a few teams but He's a steady player. Excellent for this half-court game that Washington wants to play. He was a rookie with Phoenix when they tangled with Boston in the playoffs back in 76. Ten on the shot clock. Now the double team stripped away by Sobers. You're seeing most clubs right now running that double team wherever they have the ball in the hands of a star player immediately run someone at him to try and get him to get the ball out of his hands. Contact there. Henderson pleading for a foul. Seven on the shot clock. Ruin spins in the lane. He was matched up on Maxwell that time. And here comes Dennis Johnson in the Boston Celtics. Henderson pull up on the side. He misses. DJ keeps it alive. Henderson a good job as Bird will go back to Dennis Johnson. One fake, the 10-footer, and he hits it. Great effort that time by the Boston Celtics. Henderson kept that ball alive. A tremendous athletic play by Gerald Henderson, a very good athlete. Frankie Johnson will push it up. His brother Eddie, of course, plays for the Atlanta Hawks. Frank really would like to play at a fast pace. He really would like to go with it. Parrish guarding Mahorn right now, and Mahorn has hit his two shots. 
So there's been a change in strategy as Parrish is on Mahorn right now, and Maxwell's going to be guarding Rula. They're going to go inside to Maxwell down low. He wants the ball against Mahorn inside with his quickness. Mahorn, the rebound. Mahorn said, get away from me, Cedric. I'm too big and strong. Tied at 12, 3.30 left to go, opening period. Game four. Johnson's the only player on the floor for Washington that's conducive to a running game. Mahorn again. Mahorn's really a little hungry. He had to look at his eye as he established good post position. There were times during the season, Roger, he disappeared, just didn't get his hands on the ball. Maxwell now drops it back to DJ, moves in close, and he is fouled going to the hoop. Ricky Sobers commits the foul. And checking into the game now will be Kevin McHale, number 32. And Larry Bird is going to sit down. Kevin uh, came over to us before the game. He says, tell my dad hi. He just underwent surgery in St. Paul, Minnesota. We wish him a healthy recovery. Also like to say our sympathies out to David DeBuscher, who just lost his mom, who just passed away in Detroit this weekend. And I know to David and his family, we sent our deepest sympathies. Dennis Johnson, another very good free throw shooter. Is DJ, well, through the years, ranks number five right now among active players, 85%. Roger, they shot 79.8 as a team, which is the second best in Celtic history. The best was during a 73-74 season when they won the world championship under Tommy Heinsohn, and they shot 80%. But they're just shooting 67% from the free throw line so far in this series. McHale matched up on Mahorn now. Ricky Mahorn is 4 of 4. Mahorn's in a rhythm right now, and he's getting the position on the floor that he wants, eight, nine feet away from the goal. they got to push him out a little further. Bullets with a two-point lead, 16-14. 2.40 left to go, opening period. As Ricky Mahorn has attempted four shots, he's made all four. Henderson not afraid to put it up from three-point left. Maxwell inside, and Ruland cleared house, releases to Sobers, wide open for the lay-in. They take advantage of a breakdown by the Celtics. No one rotates back. Henderson's caught sleeping because he knows they're not a running basketball team, and Ruland takes advantage of it. Well, Dennis Johnson got caught underneath, and he decided to argue with John Panic over the call, and that left Sobers wide open. Henderson should have rotated back, though, Roger, giving him an extra defensive player on a defensive transition. Steal by Sobers. Out of bounds will be Celtics basketball. They trail by four. And checking into the game, Joe Kopicki. Rula now going to block out and get good inside position. Uses his positioning and his timing. There he is with the rebound. You can put a dime under his sneakers. He can't jump at all, Jeff. But he gets great positioning to make the outlet. Joe Kopicki just checked into the game, and he gets the rebound. He's part of the University of Detroit connection that's in the NBA. He played with Earl Puritan at the University of Detroit. He's just a complimentary role player. A lot of beef on that body. They're isolating Rulin. Henderson comes over to help out. Rulin finds Mahorn. He's 5-5. Five five. And then he points at Jeff Rule and he says, nice assist, big guy. As John and Andre said earlier, he's been doing a great job passing the basketball rule. Henderson, and it counts. Gerald Henderson took it baseline and put it up and in. And the foul's on Joe Kapicki. What a story Gerald Henderson is. He came out of the league, uh, came into the league. He was cut by San Antonio, played for the Tucson Gunners in the uh, Western Basketball League. No one really wanted him. He finally convinced the Celtics to give him a shot, and here he is, a starter in the playoffs. Had his string of 327 consecutive games stopped with the, about five games left the season because of a hamstring injury. Full court pressure in Washington went right through at that time. Gene Shue has prepared this team in handling the pressure by posting up a guy in the middle of the floor, Mahorn. Whistle underneath, foul's going to be on Kevin McHale. Roger, when the Celtics went to that diamond zone press with McHale at the point of it as they bring Buckner on the floor with Wedman, when they went to that diamond zone press, immediately in the open area, posted up Mahorn. Quinn Buckner shot the ball extremely well, Dick, uh, the last seven, eight games of the season and in the playoffs, around 56, 57 percent. I know Gene Chu was telling me today at the shoot-around that that has been a plus for the Boston Celtics. As Mahorn now hits the free throw, he has 11 points. And Jeff Malone now, the rookie, number one pick for Mississippi State, checks in the game. You talk about Quinn Buckner. This style of play really is conducive to his style. He's a structured, set offensive player, and he's much better in a slow-paced game than he is in an up-and-down tempo. 
Mahorn has scored 10 of the last 12 Washington points, and they lead it by 5, 22-17, with just over a minute to go in the opening period. Wedman, the outside rainbow, and he hits. He started to gain some confidence down the stretch. When they won 10 out of 11, they start playing them also at the big guard spot, so he showed a lot of flexibility when he was on the floor. A lot of pressure now. McHale and Wedman ganging up on Sobers, and they get it across to Rulin. Who can handle the ball for a big man? That's a two-pointer by Jeff Malone. He misses, and it's going to be Wedman over the back. And the Celtics are over the limit. Malone has excellent range as a shooter. We look at Casey Jones on the sideline. He coached here at Washington, uh, went to the finals. Where they were beaten that one year Golden by State Al Adels and great. Rick Barry had a great, great series. But a guy like Malone comes off the bench, doesn't get his body warmed up at all. You're better off coming on the floor, getting yourself a 12, 11-foot jump shot. He takes a 20-footer, and it hits nothing but hard iron and comes off like a brick. They got a problem with the buzzer. Larry Bird comes back into the game for the Celtics as Rick Mahorn will go to the line. Sober stepped to the line. Ricky wanted to shoot those free throws. Do you blame him? He's no. probably one of the all-time no. great free throw shooters in the NBA. Eight of nine years, he's been over 80%. And But this guy's been perfect tonight. Five of five from the floor, two of two from the line, and giving 13 points now. Got to really credit the executive, uh, the GM, sitting upstairs, Bob Ferry, for the find of Mahorn. I think Mahorn, personally, Roger, is a great backup kind of center you'd like to have coming off the bench, play some power forward. If you can go get a shot-blocking intimidator in the middle, I don't think you can win a national championship with a Rick Mahorn at center. And I don't mean that to be negative. I just think that he's more or less a good role player. Bird to Cedric Maxwell underneath, and Maxwell with four points. Mahorn has scored 12 of the last 14 points for Washington. And if you walked in off the street and didn't know much about basketball, you'd say, hey, this guy should be an all-pro. 16 and 14 on the respective clocks. Malone back inside to Rulin. Mahorn, why not? He's made them all. He finally missed one. And it will be Celtic basketball with five on the clock. Malone is going to be eventually a good player for Washington. Once he gets a little feel for the game, learns it's been a learning experience as a rookie, but he has all the tools to be a good big guard. Two seconds, the running hander by Bird off the front of the rim. And that will end the opening period of play from the Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland, with the Washington Bullets holding a three-point, 24-21 lead over the Boston Celtics. Well, Dick Vitale with you at the Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland. Bullets with a 24-20 lead. And we mentioned earlier how the Celtics had been to the foul line 30 more times in three games in the Bullets. But when you take a look at teams with the fewest personal fouls, it's Seattle, Dallas, Boston, Utah, and Washington, which is known as a very physical team, Dick, with just 24 fouls a game. Is that misleading? It is misleading because, again, as we keep referring to the number of possessions due to the pace and tempo of the game, and also the fact, Roger, they don't really play a pressing style defense. And so therefore they're not going to commit a whole lot of personals and they play a very sagging defense with their backcourt. Boston shot just 39 percent in the opening period. Washington 59. Celtics perfect seven out of seven from the line. Washington four of four. Bullets out rebounded Boston 7-6. Rulin had four rebounds the first three of the game. Turnovers four Washington three Boston. And the story in that first period Rick Mahorn 14 points five of six from the floor four of four from the line and 12 of his team's last 14 points. As we've had a couple more substitutions. They certainly had a great performance out of the horn, getting the kind of offensive productivity. They like to lift, they like to lay a lot of back screens. A lot of pressure right now by the Celtics. Ruins in the middle. And they say no, they didn't get it crossed in time. That time pressure by Quinn Buckner on Ricky Sober. Sober's dribbled it off his foot, had to go chase it down. And they didn't get it across. Greg Ballard's checked back into the game now as Gene Chu. They can't afford to make mistakes, Dick. They just have to play almost a perfect game to beat the Celtics. Because they're not going to get anything easy, Roger. They're not going to score enough of trans, enough transition layups and run up and down the floor. So everything they get, they got to work for. Sobers matched up on Wedman. Scott, the leaner, missed it. Little contact there as Sobers will bring it down to the other end. Rulin in the lane. Drops it off to Jeff Malone from 15, and he hits. That's the kind of shot Malone really wants to shoot. He's a good stationary jump shooter. 14, 15 foot, excellent shot. He's going to lose a little weight. I think he's eating too much. I got to tell his dad. I was talking to his dad earlier tonight to get him away from the table. He's got to lose about 10 pounds. 26, 21. Bird 
has yet to get a basket. He's got two free throws. McHale to turn around from outside, and he hits it. Kevin McHale, his first two points. Every time Washington has the ball, Roger, they'll rip off almost 18, 19 seconds of that 24-second clock. Wedman matched up on Malone. He goes right by him over McHale, but good intimidation by McHale. Caused Malone to change the arch of that shot, and Buckner will bring it down to Bird. Bird steps in off the glass and hits it. Great inside position by Larry Bird. He seals off the defensive player with his body, protects the basketball, slides through for the little jump shot off the glass. 26-25, one-point lead for the Bullets. Foul inside as they found Mahorn down low. Washington so well coached in their offensive sets from half court. They do a great job, that guy does, in creating a lot of two-man basketball plays, a lot of triangles on the floor, make it very difficult for you to give the double teams and give the kind of help you'd like on the basketball. Foul was on Quinn Buckner. Frankie Johnson is checked back in, and they get Bird for reaching over the back of Rick Mahorn. So all of a sudden, the Celtics have become very conscious of Rick Mahorn. Bird looks over at you, Holland, and says, hey, you, I'm Larry Bird. I'm a superstar. Don't blow the whistle. That's Rick Mahorn. He's got to prove himself in this league. Bird moves out on Ballard, who takes it from the corner and hits it. Ballard's got a quick release. He's an excellent shooter coming off the screen. He's not going to manufacture a shot off the dribble, Roger. Bird moves inside the left hand, follows it off the board, and Frankie Johnson has it. Now, Chu says, hold it up, hold it up. Ballard will take the shot. He misses it. Rulin tips it in. Rulin gets good inside position, runs the court in perfect offensive boards. Chu Shu is saying, hold it up, back it up, like you said. They said, no, coach, we're running. Bird, the offensive rebound. He's down on the deck. And Hugh Hollins is going to call foul. Bird hurt his ankle. Jury, the uh, trainer on the floor. Bird looks like he's in some pain, Roger. Bird getting position on the offensive boards. The horn comes over to the top. He's holding his ankle. I didn't see him twist. I don't know if you did. I, I didn't see him he, twist uh, the he, ankle. He had position with his left leg. His right leg was off the ground, and there was some contact, and he came down on the side of that right ankle. Dr. Tom Silva out there with Ray Melchiori, and Larry Bird. Oh, he's hurt. He can't put any pressure at all no. down, it seems. They have to get that on ice. And there was a game earlier this year. Larry was out with lower back spasms, and they came in here in Washington. As a matter of fact, Scott Wedman had a big game, scoring 18 points this season high in that particular win. Bird walking around. Now, sometimes, Dick, the best thing is if you can keep moving on it and keep going on it, keep it active. And then it's going to swell up afterwards, but you can continue to play. I don't know a great deal about injuries. I know we used to have an old cry when a player used to go down. Come on, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. One time in practice, Bob Lanier, I, I, I tripped a little bit in a drill, and I was really out, Roger. And he says, come on, Dick, it doesn't hurt. Tom McMillan has checked into the game, and Maxwell has come in now, and Bird is going to go over and sit down. You know, there was an article in the Washington Post today talking about the acting that goes on with the Boston Celtics. Uh, some of the Bullets players feel that they're some of the best actors in the National Basketball Association. They do a good job acting on a basketball floor as players, too. You don't win 62 games just acting, Roger. You perform. Buckner misses. Parrish, the offensive rebound in. Parrish said, that's the easiest basket I'm going to get all night. He couldn't believe that nobody was going to chop on him as he had the inside position. Wedman matched up on the rookie, Jeff Malone. Wedman really working hard defensively. Not a whole lot of speed between Malone and Wedman, and he could check Malone because Malone's not going to blow by him. Ballard on top, seven on the shot clock. Rulin misses, and Buckner comes off with the rebound. Quinn Buckner drops it back to Parrish. It would have counted, and Robert Parrish will go to the line. The Chief doesn't smile too often. We very rarely see a smile out of Robert Parrish, but he brings a lot of smiles to Red Arback and also to Casey Jones' face. As Parrish now going to get the ball back, steps back. Buckner knows where he is on the floor. 
Now he gets position, he gets banged. Jimmy Rogers, the assistant coach, and Chris Ford want to lead some cheers. You know, as, as great a year as Larry Bird has had, Robert Parrish has had almost as good, but not quite, as the Chief hits the free throw. Second in minutes played, field goal percentage, block shots, scoring, but he was the leading rebounder this year for the Celtics, almost 11 a game. Roger, anytime you're going to win 62 basketball games, you need more than one guy to lead you to the promised land. You have to have a team effort, and the Celtics have had that team effort. And I credit a lot of that to the coaching of Casey Jones, who was my choice for coach of the year. Bird getting ready to check back in for the Boston Celtics. Milwaukee trailing Atlanta 27-22 after one as Frankie Johnson hits from outside. His first two points. He's a better shooter than his average of 45% indicates. Shot selection is what brings his percentage down. Boston Celtics would like a timeout with 8.42 left to go in the first half. They trail the Washington Bullets, 32-29. Boston now three of six in the second period, Washington four of seven. And uh, since Bird went out when he went down with that ankle injury, Parrish has scored all five points, Dick. But Larry now has checked back into the game. Seems to be moving well. He looks like he's walking okay, and it looks like he was able to flex it and it's ready to play. I'll tell you what, though, when you see Bird goes down, at least if you're Casey Jones, your stomach goes right up to your throat. Red arm back up there smoking that cigar also went down and was choking on it a little bit. Parrish now with seven straight points for the Boston Celtics. Roger, he establishes good position, comes across the lane with that hook shot. He's part of that all Golden State team that you and I were talking about that uh, they let get away. Parrish, Ruland, Bernard King, Gus Williams, and World Be Free. And then we talk about Wilkes. Can you believe that? That's why they haven't been to the playoffs in a long time. Frankie Johnson outside. He's hit two in a row. They play a little, excuse me, Raj. They play a little two-man basketball, and Johnson has that long-range jumper going down. Buckner and Wedman, McHale, Bird, and Robert Parrish. Frankie Johnson, Jeff Malone, McMillan, Ruin, and Ballard. They go to Parrish. Is it nine straight? He misses. McHale, the offensive board, and in. Kevin McHale now with four points. McHale with those long arms, really works the glass. We know he can score running up and down the floor, but he gets a good offensive board. 34-33, bullets lead it by one, and this is the Washington tempo. They are doing exactly what they want to do. Washington's got to get some points out of Tom McMillan. He's on a floor to give them some offense. In and out, and Bird the rebound. He's there for one reason. Get some points because he's not going to give you the kind of play on the glass. He's not an outstanding rebounder. He'll work hard defensively, but he's limited to what he can do, and they're going right at him. Basket doesn't count, and the foul is going to be on Tom McMillan, who has had his best statistical year this season as Ricky Mahorn checks in and McMillan comes out. But McMillan really has played very well since coming over from Atlanta, averaging over nine points a game, and that's been his career high. Plays hard all the time, Roger, and he's got a great touch, so he's going to give you some good offense. Now they go to McHale again down low against Mahorn, and Kevin McHale now with six points. I don't think there's any doubt that he's the best sixth man in basketball. You can talk about all your other sixth men. He represents part of that six-man basketball when you talk about the Celtics that started with uh, Frank Ramsey, Havlicek, and went into the days of Paul Silas, Don Nelson, and now Kevin McHale. Celtics have taken their first lead since it was 12-10. They lead at 35-34, and Gene Shu and the Bullets have called a timeout. She has really good offensive position on Jeff Woolen right now. As he's going to come across the lane. Tom McMillan staring at his man. He should be giving help right now to take that drive. Look at McMillan staring at his man, number 54. You look at the white hair. Tom, go in there and give some help. Now it's too late, Tom. Parrish has got a deuce. Front court scoring has been the story so far here in the second period. Parrish, six points. McHale, six. And Bird, two. As Boston has hit six of 12, 50%. And Washington is still shooting the ball well, 5 of 9, 56%. What's been the swing here in the last few minutes, Dick? Celtics have been able to get the ball down inside. I want to make a point for all the youngsters out there that I just witnessed on the screen. You must watch the ball in your man when you're playing a guy without the ball, Roger, not just the man. Bird the rebound as Quinn Buckner did a back roll after being bumped by Frankie Johnson. And the Celtics with a one-point lead, 35-34. 
They're looking into McHale. He's guarded by Mahorn. Wedman has it. Parrish on top. Swings it to Buckner. The high arching shot. And Quinn Buckner, nothing but net there. As he has been an effective outside shooter for the Boston Celtics through the end of the year. Final 12 games of the year, he shot 59%. So far in the playoffs, shooting 58% from the Roger, floor. He can hit that open jump shot if he can shoot it stationary and not off the dribble. Whistle as Rulin going to the basket is fouled by Robert Parrish. Second foul on Parrish. Rulin doesn't have a turnaround shot. This is the move he makes to that side. Rulin right now, though, because of the way Parrish is playing behind him, he can't drop step to get the inside position. Now he has to use some dribble moves to get free, and he's not the quickest with his feet in the lead. Gene Shue, if he has one thing to work on, it's a turnaround jump shot. The scoop by Rulin, he misses. And Wedman to Buckner, stripped away from behind. And here come the Washington Bullets. Sobers and Buckner really mixing it up. Bird deflects it. Celtics with a three-point lead. Frankie Johnson, he misses. And McHale the rebound. Now, that time they sent Wedman down court. Celtics couldn't get it to him, and they'll hold it up. Celtics always trying to release somebody, aren't they, Dick? They want to let somebody go to put pressure on his defense constantly. Buckner again. Now, he moved that time with the basketball. That's a shocker, seeing him shoot it off the dribble. He must have heard me, and he said, this is for you, Dick. I'm going to show you. I can put it down on the deck and Ooh. shoot it as well. Good awareness by Quinn to spin away from the back pick of Rick Mahorn. Eight straight points for the Celtics, and Buckner comes up with a steal. Down court to Bird. He's got McHale in front of him. Stripped away by Frankie Johnson. Off Bird. It's going to be bullet basketball with 5.18 to go in the half, and the Celtics leading by five. Buckner's a very heady player. I thought he fit in perfectly into the Milwaukee Bucks system when he played. It was the leader in the backcourt for the Bucks because they don't run up and down the floor. He's just not, I don't believe, comfortable in the Celtics situation. Ballard, the step back. Now, Parrish caused him to change that shot. Good job by Robert Parrish on the switch off as Bird went inside. Parrish stepped out. Ballard had to adjust the shot. And it's Celtics basketball. Uh, after one, Philly leads New Jersey by 10, 34 24. McHale, turnaround, misses. Ballard strips it away, and Frankie Johnson comes up with it. Celtics are getting good, solid basketball backcourt play from Buckner and Wedman, and that's a plus when they can get quality play. They're susceptible to a lot of pressure, but because Washington doesn't pressure, they can give them some good basketball on the floor. Buckner almost took it away from Ruin. Seven on the shot clock. Now Wedman strips it away. Buckner and Wedman, two on two. Quinn is able to draw the foul, and he was very fortunate there, Dick, because he didn't have a good shot. Bad foul by Frankie Johnson. Quinn doesn't have the blinding speed as many of the point guards a la Isaiah Thomas, et cetera, in the league. That's good defensive pressure by Buckner. Good quick hands. That's the second one. Should have had a walk annihilation on Jeff Rulin as he goes to the goal. Wedman pops the ball loose. Here comes Buckner. He doesn't have that great speed. Loses control of the ball. Now gets it. Maintains good body control to draw the foul. And Hugh Holland says, I got him for the foul. Dennis Johnson has checked into the game, and Scott Wedman will sit down as Quinn Buckner goes to the foul line. Played with Milwaukee. Came over in the trade for Dave Cowens. He can't hurt you, Roger. Just being on your basketball team is such a quality kid. Not a great touch. There's no doubt about it. He's not what you would call a good shooter. 20-second timeout. He almost put an air ball up from the foul line there. As Gene Shu with his team trailing by five and really not doing much offensively, the Celtics defense really has done a good job here in the last four or five possessions against Washington. They're double-teaming on a basketball, and they're popping it loose, and they're able to run it up the court and create some pressure. But to remember this, Roger, shooting free throws, if you're a little fatigued and physically exhausted, and he's playing a long stretch of minutes, which he may not be really comfortable playing because all year he did not play a whole lot of time. He averaged about 14 minutes a game this year. I'd like to remind you, this program is authorized under rights granted by the National Basketball Association solely for the entertainment of our audience in any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the National Basketball Association is prohibited. Buckner hits one of two, and he has five points. There's one word to describe Quinn Buckner. He's a winner. McHale now helping Buckner in the backcourt. They get it to Mahorn, who puts it to the floor. McHale comes from behind and got a piece of it. That's exactly what the Celtics want the pressure to do. Create the fast shot so they can get up and down the court and get a little bit tempo. Joe Kapicki has come in now to guard Kevin McHale, so they're going to put a little beef 
on McHale. And they've got Mahorn on Parrish, Ballard on Bird, with nine on the shot clock. Five on the shot clock. Now a switch off. Three second violation called against the Boston Celtics. The Celtics have scored nine straight points. Too stationary on offense, Roger. I can't stress it enough how coaches want to see constant motion on the floor. Whenever you have motion on the floor, it's very difficult for the defense to key on the basketball. Washington has been scoreless for almost four minutes, and McHale with the block of the Ballard shot. So Kevin McHale, the last two Washington possessions, has caused block shots as he takes it and hits from the corner. Kevin McHale with eight points in the period, and the Celtics have scored 11 straight, and they lead at 42-34. One of the great assets of all the championship years when Red Arback won nine out of ten, and that's unbelievable. Blocked the shot by Russell, converted on the other end for a score. Inside to Kapicki, stolen by Bird. Dennis Johnson comes up with it. Parrish down low, comes down with it. The pump and in. Robert Parrish showed you some good movement for a seven-footer. Parrish now with eight points, and it's 44-34. Excellent transition basketball. Johnson leads Parrish with a good touch pass. Oh, Gene Shu, an emphatic timeout, as the Boston Celtics now have reeled off 14 straight points, and they have taken a 44-34 lead with 2.56 left to go in the first half. In the last five minutes and 16 seconds, Boston has ripped off 13 straight points. McHale's had six, Buckner five, and Parrish two. One thing I can guarantee, Roger, and I don't have to be a genius to do this, I think everybody in basketball can guarantee this, the fat lady will not sing in Washington this year. That I can guarantee you. Sobers, Dennis Johnson guarding him. Going into Ruland. Blocked by Parrish, just no way he was going to get that ruling back talking to the official. He wanted to foul Quinn Buckner. Quinn Buckner now with seven points for the Celtics, and it's 46-34. One thing again, Roger, they blocked the shot and they converted. So many times you see the blocked shot go out of bounds, remain in possession of the team that had the ball originally, but they block it and they convert it. Two Coming into in this row. game, the Celtics had blocked 20 shots in the first three, and finally, Ricky Sobers. And that is six minutes without a score. They're gonna have to get some offense from a few other people. They just can't look exclusively to Rulin because you can read them defensively. Or Mahorn, as they did in the first period. Bird, looking at three points. Back to Bird. Seven on the shot clock. Buckner, he's had the hot hand. Missed that one. And it's going to be Washington basketball. Quinn Buckner looks a little fatigued to me right now, Roger. He's played so long on the floor. There's the head fake. Once, two, three, go up four times. He wants the two points. He wants the goal. He may be right. That may have been on its downward flight. Very tough call. I'm glad I'm sitting here, <laughs> not with the striped shirt on. What a competitor Woolen is. He's a fighter. Ballard from 20 feet, he hits. Greg Ballard now with six points, and the Bullets have scored four straight. It's 46-38. They got to get Ballard into the offensive flow and get some shots out of Greg. He's working so hard defensively against Bird. Bird has just four points. McHale, the fallaway shot. He misses badly. Parrish, the offensive board. Strong move to the hole by Robert Parrish. Is there any doubt that he's playing like an all-star, Roger, and dominating the inside tonight? 14 points for the Chief, and it's 48-38 with just over a minute to go first half. Ballard's college coach is here. Got to coach the Kamikaze kids at Oregon. Dickie Harder now an assistant with the Detroit Pistons. Dennis Johnson thought he had a block shot, but they're going to call the foul on DJ. That is his third. Parrish is at six of eight from the floor. Dennis Johnson, one of the best shot blockers from the guard slot in basketball. Smart also used his right hand, got caught for the foul, but he used his right hand because if he uses his left, he makes body contact, and for sure, he thought he could have stole one there. Scott Wedman will check in, and they'll send Quinn Buckner out. Quinn, a solid effort, off the bench with seven points. He looked like a little tired to me. He gave him a solid effort offensively and defensively. Ricky Sobers will now go to the line. He is six points on the night. And, uh, you know, he's another one of these guys, as far as free throw shooting goes, he has made his mark in the National Basketball Association. 
He's a street fighter. Came out, as we said, he went Clinton High School. That high school produced Tiny Archibald, Tom Henderson, who played with the Houston Rockets, also played in Washington and Atlanta. It also produced Butch Lee, had a little trial in the NBA, and is now in a, I understand, a real estate business, but played for Al McGuire at Marquette University. They've had so many great ones at the Whit Clinton. Sobers misses the second one, and less than a minute to go, Celtics have a nine-point lead. Fred Arbach's acquisition of this guy right here, Dennis Johnson, has made this team a legitimate, legitimate contender for the world championship. Ten on the shot clock. They spring Bird loose, and Larry Bird hits. He has six points now, and it's 15-39. Not going to keep him quiet all night long, Roger. Eventually, he's going to create, break out, and create a lot of damage on the floor. Mahorn has not scored here in the second period. The Bullets have scored just 15 points in this period. Ruland inside, and Jeff Ruland now with eight. They created the 45-degree angle for the pass into Ruland, isolated him so they couldn't give help defense. Seven seconds left to go in the half. Dennis Johnson drives the lane and puts it in. He's a driver, a slasher, better than he is a perimeter jump shooter. And that ends the first half of play from the Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland, with the Boston Celtics leading the Washington Bullets 52-41. The uh, Washington Bullets were on a minus side where the Boston Celtics were plus 4.5. They rebounded 45.1 times to 40.6 for their opposition for a 4.5 4 plus side. Celtics shot 54% in that first half, and this year when the Celtics have shot better than 50% from the floor, they are 43 and 2. When they shoot less than 50%, they're 19 and 18, and they have been shooting 45% from the floor on an average in the three previous games in this series. Sobers misses, follows his own miss, puts it up with the left hand. Mahorn. And Henderson knocks it out of bounds, and it'll be Bullets basketball. Very, very dangerous time zone right now for the Washington Bullets. If they try to catch up a little bit too soon and take some bad shots and get out of their offensive sets, they can be in big trouble. Boston can put them away. Next four minutes could be very important. Stripped away by Bird to Henderson and in. Great give-and-go basketball, Roger. That's from the olden days. Give the ball up, cut without it. He gets it back for the layup. Good, good basketball by the Celtics. Bird moving a little gingerly on that right ankle. He told me he had it taped at halftime, a little heavy. And the miss and Parrish the rebound. They'll send it down to Henderson. Pulls up with it blocked by Mahorn. And Ballard steps out of bounds. The tempo in the opening moments of the second half definitely Boston's way. Washington's first two possessions, Ricky Sobers taking it in his own hands, going a little one-on-one -on -one basketball, and that's not Washington's style of play. They try to utilize five people, get some good screening action, play good half-court offense. They're not a good catch-up basketball team, Roger, because they don't have the kind of speed on the floor to pressure. Parrish, and he draws the foul going to the hoop. Foul's going to be on Rick Mahorn, and on Mahorn, that is his third. Parrish gets the ball in triple threat position, faces the defensive player, can either shoot the jumper, can drive with it, he decides to drive with it, and he draws the foul on a reach-in. Parrish surpassed 10,000 career points on February 26th of this year, and immediately Casey Jones goes to his bench and brings in Quinn Buckner for Gerald Henderson. Now, Henderson has had a hamstring problem. He missed six games at the end of the year and he is looking at that right hamstring right now as Parrish misses both free throws and Robert missed a couple of key free throws on Saturday uh, in the overtime. Buckner will be matched up on Frankie Johnson. Ballard outside and hits. Good ball reversal. They swing it to the weak side. Ballard, a good jump shooter in a stationary position, and he really knows how to utilize the screen to shoot that jump shot. Washington led 24-21 after the first period, but they scored just 17 points in the second period, and uh, the Celtics came back with a 52-41 halftime lead. Parrish the turnaround, and he has been the main man. Robert Parrish now with 16 points. That shot's almost unstoppable, Roger, when he drifts away with his great size. He shoots it above his head, has the long arms. You just can't get a piece of it. If it's falling, you're in big, big trouble. One point in that first half. Boston ran off 15 straight points. 
as Bird knocks it loose. DJ saves it. Now well, they've got a chance with a five on three right now as Maxwell sends it across to Buckner. Wide open, off the glass and in, and Quinn Buckner with nine points. I should say a four on three because Bird was still down at the other end. And immediately the Bullets want a timeout with 9.48 left to go on the third. The Celtics have moved out to a 15 point, 58 43 lead. <laughs> Straight here, ESPN will bring you live coverage of the Dub Tree from Reunion Arena, Dallas, Texas. Jim Simpson and Cliff Drysdale will be there with you. And I'm going to be there also on the TV, too, because you know I'm a tennis freak. I just came back from Nick Voluntary's tennis camp in Florida. Frankie Johnson loses it. Backcourt. That will be Boston Celtics basketball. The Boston Celtics will have Quinn Buckner in in place of Gerald Henderson, who's got a bit of a hamstring problem. He's over on the Celtic bench right now. Casey's done such a great job, Roger. Everybody talks about all the talent. They won 56 games last year under Bill Fitch. But there was a lot of turmoil at the end of the year when they were blown out by Milwaukee. They lost four straight. I think he's done a great job blending his team together to win 62 games. Celtic bench is outscored. The Washington bench, 19-2. Parrish misses it. Good pressure by Rulin that time. 58-43, 15-point lead, the biggest lead of the game. What's Washington got to do here, Dick? Washington just doesn't have the kind of floor speed, Roger, to get the points in a big bundle all of a sudden. They have to do what they just did there, execute their offense, chip away at it. There's a lot of time on a the clock. They try to run up and down and use that whole 94 feet. We'll have a blowout. Bird inside to Parrish, the turnaround. Oh. Parrish, the follow, loses it. On the floor, Robert gets it back. Quinn Buckner chasing it. Look at Quinn Buckner. He has played some kind of bang game off the bench for the Boston Celtics. Very heady player. Seems to always make the solid play on the floor. Very, very into the game. Maxwell working low on Mahorn. Puts it up. And Maxwell, the foul. Cedric's been really flying on the floor offensively. Hasn't been able to get down inside. He doesn't have the kind of upper body strength. That guy's won over 650 games in his career. There he is on a post, very quick player, but he can't get the good inside position with the drop step, and then he reaches over the top, the rubber man, and he's called for the foul. Maxwell now on the switch off on Sobers, and Rulin set a humongous pick, and they're going to call the foul on Jeff Rulin. And Rulin is steaming. Jeff's been known to have a few technicals called on him. Look at the screen. He's laying a front screen. He steps out, Roger. Good call by the official. You have to be stationary. That's why a lot of coaches like to use what we call a rear screen, so that the offensive player doesn't see the dribbler coming off of to where he can lend a helping hand. Rulin just gave a little bit move with the shoulder. his body and his shoulder, and the official was right on it with a good call. Sorry, Jeff. That's the third foul on Jeff Rulin. Here they demonstrate two-man basketball. Sobers is trying to run the defensive player into the screen. Notice how Jeff Rulin lays that shoulder out. As soon as he lays that shoulder out, that's immediately movement in the body, and therefore it's called by the official a block. That's why, Roger, a lot of guys like to teach the rear screen to where the offensive player has no vision of the guy coming with the basketball, so therefore he doesn't give that help. And those hurt a lot more, too. Dennis Johnson, they're giving him that outside shot. He hits it. Dennis Johnson now with eight points. Scouting report says give him the outside shot. He's not really a good perimeter shooter, and if you check his stats out, they back that up. He's hit three or four, though, in this game, Dick. He didn't come in shooting the basketball very well, just 34% after the first three games. Ruling down low, and he's fouled on his way to the hoop. It's going to be on Robert Parrish, and that'll be Parrish's third, so both Parrish and Rulin now with three fouls. Washington goes to that two-man game where they get the good 45-degree angle, and that's so important in getting good pass action down into the post. You've got to get that good wing position with the basketball so you can make that direct entry down into the guy down low like Rulin's establishing post position. This year, Rulin shot 57.9% from the floor. That is the best in Washington Bullets' 23-year history. He and Jimmy Valvano hooked up at Iona 
and they really had that basketball program. In fact, they made the main event when they went to Madison Square yeah. Garden. They blew Louisville away. Don't talk, to, don't talk to him about Valvano now. There's a little bad blood there, unfortunately, because they really were good for each other. 60-46, 14 points, Celtics lead. 7.35 to go in the third. Parrish now double teamed. He steps out of it, and he hits the shot. Robert Parrish now with 18 points. He's determined to score, Roger. Almost every time he touches the basketball now, he's exclusively looking to go to the glass with the jump shot. Bullets went to the foul line just six times in the first half. 16-point lead now, the biggest lead for the Boston Celtics. Buckner fundamentally solid defensively, learned the tricks of the trade as Johnson blows by him that time with his great quickness. But he learned his defensive basketball from out of Indiana and Bobby Knight. Bird, the miss, and Rulin now with seven rebounds. Long pass down for to Frankie Johnson. You were asking me the other day who's one of the best baseball passes. We have to put Jeff Rulin into that category along with uh, Larry Bird throwing a ball the length of the court. Good job by Washington to hold it up. Frankie Johnson could have taken it in one on one. Blocked by Bird. Ruin gets it back. He's determined to take it in and it counts. <laughs> Strong baseline drive by Jeff Rule, and he gets the good inside position. Roger, he squares his body to the baseline, which is so important in your power layup. Watch now. The ball goes down in a box. He puts it to the baseline. He reverse layups. Bird says, no way, Jeff. Get it out of here, big fella. Jeff says, but I'm coming back again. You try to get this one, Larry. You're not going to get a piece of this one. He says, count it. Only one game this year, Ruin involved in that he didn't shoot a free throw, and he shot a few here tonight as Jeff Ruin now with six points in this period, 14 on the night. Robert Parrish now with four fouls, and Kevin McHale will check in at the next opportunity. Ruin has scored the last six Washington points, and it's 62-49. Celtics with a 13-point lead. Not bad when you can go to your bench and get a Ruin on the floor. I mean, get a McHale on the floor for a Parrish. Dennis Johnson just simply bounced the ball off his foot that time. The turnover to Washington. And I guess they'll probably go down to Jeff Ruin one more time. Parrish with four fouls. Offensive foul on Ricky Sober. That hurt right there. They have to make each possession count. They can't afford to give it up. Sober's isolated. They got a one-on-one. -on -one. He hooks him. There's no doubt about it. Again, a good call by John Vanek with even the left if, hand. He even if he him. just puts the arm out, he just going to get called for it. McHale now in there, and the pass thrown away. He didn't have what I was talking about a little bit earlier, Roger, that good 45-degree angle, which comes from foul line extended. If you were to take the foul line and extend it across the court, from that wing, you get a good angle in entering it to the box. Interesting substitution. They take Maxwell out and put McHale in. Leaf Parrish in there as Sobers misses. Tipped around. Dennis Johnson cuts up with a three-on-two Celtic break. DJ in the middle. The pull-up misses. Bounce loose, and here comes Ricky Sobers. He's got Ballard on the wing. He missed it. Sobers gets it. And they're going to call a loose ball foul on Robert Parrish, and that's his fifth. Two on one basketball. Ballard takes it up. He just misses the layup. They executed it perfectly, except came off without the score. And then Parrish gets his fifth. Now, Casey Jones took a gamble, leaving Parrish in with four fouls and over six minutes to go. Now he's got his fifth with 5.23 to go in the third. Not a good gamble at all. I have to definitely disagree with Casey in that sequence. I thought you should have definitely had Parrish out of the game, Roger, especially with the kind of bench people they have. Maxwell back in there, 62-49. Celtics have led by as many as 16. McHale wants it down low. To Buckner, underneath the left hand, he misses and ruin with eight rebounds. Washington very intelligent on the floor right now. They're not playing an up-tempo game. They know they're down, but they're staying within their offense, running their sets, and now they're going to go down to Ruland again. He says, give me the rock. Now they're going to double-team him with Buckner. That leaves Frankie Johnson open, and he hits. Good patient basketball gets it down to 11. Casey Jones wants ML Carr, and he'll check in at the next opportunity. He'll draw the wrath of the crowd here. They weren't too happy with ML on the floor. ML's a fighter, and he's the kind of guy that gives you an emotional lift when he's on the floor. Maxwell swings it to Dennis Johnson. Buckner takes the shot. He misses it. Tipped around. Bird gets it. Puts it up. 
and traveling is called on Larry Bird. John Bannock with an excellent call. Trail official sees it, calls the walking violation on Larry Bird. There again, you're seeing Roger, the perimeter game of the Celtics really not existing. I mean, you talk about Buckner and Johnson. They can hit two or three, but they're not good perimeter jump shooters. Gerald Henderson has also checked into the game. ML Carr, Jeff Malone in for the Washington Bulls. A little bad blood on Saturday between ML Carr and Ricky Sobers as Carr came up with a couple of steals. A little taunting between ML and Ricky Sobers. And there was ML Carr putting an elbow in the back of Greg Ballard. And Hugh Hollins immediately calls it. And the Celtics are over the limit with 4-12 to go in the third. ML told me before the game, he said, everybody gets on my case. I got to read the paper today. Ricky Sobers jumping all over me, saying, why are they giving me so much ink and print? I came in only for a few minutes. He said, I only know how to play the game one way, and that's 100% all the time. He said, coach, honest effort. That's what you taught me. I said, I'm glad I taught you something. <laughs> Ballard, third leading scorer and rebounder for the Bullets this year. I haven't been known to teach too many guys too many things, Roger. Well, you didn't have ML that long. 62-53, seven straight points for the Washington Bullets. As the Celtic lead now at nine, and a charge on Cedric Maxwell. And the Celtics quickly losing their composure here. Good defensive positioning on the floor by Jeff Woolen to drive, to draw the charge for Maxwell. The Celtics right now have to start to establish some rhythm to their offense and get the ball into the hands of McHale and Larry Bird. Guys that are trying to score really are trying to score from points on the floor where they're not as effective as Bird and McHale can be. Frankie Johnson to ruin it in. Nine straight points for the Washington Bullets and Ruland with eight in the period, 16 on the night. 62-55, a 16-point Celtic lead has been cut to seven, and the crowd really into it now at the Capitol Center as Bird backs in, double-teamed by Frankie Johnson, and Hugh Hollins with the whistle. As soon as Larry gets the basketball and puts it to the floor and tries to reverse dribble immediately, that draws the double team. 20-second timeout by the Boston Celtics. Foul was on Frankie Johnson, his second. And just the second team foul on the Washington Bullets. Dick, on Saturday, the Celtics went through a real lull in the third period. It was a one-point game at halftime. The Celtics had the lead. The third period, it was almost like they lost interest. Here, they put on a real good surge at the beginning. Parrish picked up a couple quick fouls, and Parrish has been the key man so far for the Celtics today. Parrish so effective early in the game, but now with five fouls saddled on them and sitting on the sideline, they've lost a little bit low in their game. And they're not running up and down the floor, Roger. They started to run a little bit, but you got to credit that again to that offensive tempo of Washington. Washington has impressed me with the fact that they were ready to be blown out, but yet they stayed within their system, got the ball down to the horse, the thoroughbred, the Rolls Royce man, Mr. Roland, and he delivered some key baskets right. to get him back in the game. It's going to be a thoroughbred and a Rolls Royce all in one sentence. He can be it all. Aircraft carrier, you name it, every adjective. Henderson, the turnaround shot, tough shot by Gerald Henderson. And he hits it, give him nine. Henderson with a fine season. He posted career highs in nine different categories for the Celtics. That's the first points he scored in over four minutes of action. This game has been ebbs and flows. Ricky Mahorn hasn't been, he's been non-existent in the offense. Ballard misses and Bird the rebound. Since the first half, Mahorn hasn't been involved at all. It's been exclusively Mr. Ruling. They got to get some help out of the draft offensively for that front court. They have the sixth pick in the upcoming NBA draft. Bird off the glass and in. Larry Bird. And that ankle is causing him some problems, Dick. Bird with eight points. He's the kind of guy that can hurt you on one leg, Roger. Just being on a floor. He presents all kinds of problems with his passing ability as well as his scoring talent. Carr guarding Malone. Ruin guarded by McHale. The sweeping hook shot. Ruin does that as well as anybody in the NBA. Roger, he should not be allowed to come across the lane for that sweeping hook shot. If the defense gives help, a guy steps into that lane, force him to the outside. Ten points for Ruin. As a matter of fact, ten of the 16 in the period. McHale down low, stripped away by Jeff Malone. 
And Frankie Johnson says, hey, rookie, slow it down. 66-57, two minutes left to go in the third. Frankie Johnson, 18 feet hits. Frankie Johnson to thank Jeff Poulos. Presence on the floor for that open jump shot. They double up. They get it back out to Johnson, and he just sticks the open jump shot. Seven points, Celtic lead. Carr. ML hits it. Well, he thought about it for a while. He can't hurt you, Roger. He's just a cheerleader on the sideline. He gives you a few minutes on the floor. He's just a great asset to have as your 10th, 11th man on a basketball team. McMillan will check in at the next there. There's a little acting by ML. Malone, the baseline pop and hits. Malone said, go ahead, fall down, ML. I may be a rookie, Mr. Experience, but I'm going to put this one down in your face. 68-61, seven-point Celtic lead just over a minute to go in the third period from the Cap Center in Landover, Maryland. Celtics with a 2-1 lead in this best-of-five series. McHale double-teamed, six on the shot clock. McHale with three on the shot clock, misses, and it's going to be a loose ball foul on Larry Bird, and that is his third. Wow, the Celtics, Dick, are getting in that situation where they're milking the 24-second clock. They get you into their flow, uh, Washington. They take you out of that running game, and they get you into that half-court basketball game. As Tom McMillan comes on the floor, they're looking for McMillan to give them a few points, get some offense out of them. Very tough team to play, Roger. They're a very annoying kind of basketball team. Bird talking to Hugh Hollins. We're going to check uh, unofficially. I have Bird for three fouls. Celtics a sign posted it said he had four. We'll check on that. Celtics would rather play a team that's going to go up and down the floor like the Detroit Pistons. They would love that pace. Open down, use the whole 94 feet, put a lot of points on the board. Now Mahorn's at the line. I could have sworn it was Ballard who. Uh, Bird foul, but they're going to let Rick Mahorn shoot, which is just as well. As Rick Mahorn hits his first point since the first period where he had 14. Bob Ferry deserves a lot of credit for going to find him at, uh, I believe he played at Hampton Institute in Virginia. Also, the great acquisition. I mean, they just stole Jeff Woolen for consideration after Golden State drafted him, and he went over and 68-63, 45 seconds to go in the period. Five points, Selvig lead. Bird does have four fouls. Parrish has five. McHale, the turnaround down low, an air ball. Wedman puts up missing in. Wedman's shocked, he's surprised. McHale said, hey, give me an assist. That was a pass, it wasn't a shot. 29 and 24 on the respective clocks, and the Bullets will milk it for the final shot of the period. And I wonder who will take the last shot. Twenty-second timeout called by Gene Shue and the Washington Bullets with 17 and 12 on the respective clocks. I was mentioning before, Roger, wasn't ruling uh, when he came out of Iona. He came out after three years. Then he went out and played. Uh, did he go Spain. play in Spain somewhere? Yes, I did. thought so. And then he came back and he joined Washington. They stole him for future consideration from out of uh, Golden State. And you got to credit that to Bob Ferry. By the way, Bob Ferry has some kind of player in his household. Danny Ferry, everybody seems to think he'll be one of the top three or four high school players in the United States for Damatha. Dick, a six-point, seven-point Celtic lead now, 17 to go in the period. At one time, a 16-point lead in this period. Washington in pretty good shape here with Parrish having five fouls. If they can get a hoop here to cut it to five going into the final 12 minutes, this game 70-63. It's right in their territory. They stayed within their half-court offense and executing their half-court offense for good shots down inside to Rulin. They brought Rulin right on the floor. I wonder who's going to take the last shot. Malone goes inside and puts it in. They, they were giving so much help on Rulin. They opened up that lane, and the rookie said, hey, I'm going down the lane, and I'm going to shoot this rock. Henderson, one second. He gets a shot off. And it won't go. And that'll end the third period of play. Roger, they scored the last goal on a drive by Malone, but that was due to the presence on the floor of Jeff Ruler. Celtic 70, bullet 65. 
Thank you, Greg. Since Robert Parrish went out at 525 of the third with his fifth foul, the Bullets have outscored the Celts 16 to 8. It's easy to second guess, Roger. I know sitting here, but as you and I were discussing, I definitely question Casey uh, keeping Robert on the floor with four fouls early in the third quarter, and then he draws his fifth. And they haven't been a good team since. Bad shot by Henderson. But Bird, the offensive rebounded in. Nice to have a guy like Larry Bird when something breaks down. A poor shot by Henderson. And you come up with a deuce because of the great play by the all-pro Larry Bird. Bird with 10 points now. And it's 72-65 as we begin the final 12 minutes of play from the Capitol Center. Land over Maryland. Malone, the rookie, slips. And they're going to call the foul on Dennis Johnson. And that'll be four on DJ. So Bird with four. Dennis Johnson with four. Dennis Johnson, one of the better defensive players at the guard slot. He makes a mistake. He allows him to make the turn, and he hooks him and gets called for the foul. You can't allow that guy to get that inside position on a baseline. Maxwell guarding Ballard. Ruin swings it to Frankie Johnson, misses, and Dennis Johnson the rebound. Gives it to Maxwell on the open floor. Cedric's been very quiet tonight. DJ, he is now four or five, Dick. That was a good jump shot. He has a tendency to force his jumper and take shots out of control. But that time, Maxwell drew some help. Found the basketball into the hands of Johnson. 74-65 Celts. Ruin, who has 18, sends it back to Frankie. And he hits it. There's a lot of pressure on Frankie Johnson. As long as his jump shot's alive and he's hitting it, They'll be right in the game, but they're going to give him that jumper and double up on Ruland. Foul is going to be on Jeff Ruland. That is his fourth as he hooked Mikhail down low as he was trying to guard against the pass coming down inside. So the fourth foul on Jeff Ruland. The Bullets, the team with the worst record in the NBA to make the playoffs, but they are here, and they've matched up very well all year with the Boston Celtics. They're in the toughest division in basketball. When you talk about the Atlantic division, those five teams can play Bird and in, and Bird's ankle. You can see the grimace on his face. He's limping also getting off the floor. That was an all-pro NBA move, just a clutch performer. That's why he's Dickie Vitale's choice as MVP. Malone down low, and Jeff Malone, a very strong player, is able to put it up amongst the big timber. you got to like the rookie, Roger. A steal by Frankie Johnson, and then a reach-in by Gerald Henderson in the backcourt. You gotta like that rookie. That rookie's gonna be a good player in this league for many a year. He's got the strong upper body. He's got the good range as a shooter. He just has to lose a little bit more weight. Gene Shu signaling the call on the floor. He's been calling a few plays during his coaching career. We had a game here you didn't do, Dick, but Malone against Dallas had 15 in the fourth period, 19 on the day as Washington beat Dallas. No foul there, and that's they, unbelievable. They choked on a whistle that time. No doubt about it. They just killed McMillan. And Bird misses at the other end. Henderson, the offensive board, puts it up and in. Oh, that's a big swing right there for the Boston Celtics. Right now, you've got to scream at the official. You want the players' respect, and Gene Shu is doing it. He's letting them know about it because they really missed that call on McMillan. He called a timeout. 9.39 left to go in this game. Celtics lead at 78-69. And is this a foul, folks? What do you think? Clutch plays, hasn't he, Dick? He's made two great plays down the stretch there in the beginning of the fourth quarter. That a good offensive rebound and that drive. That's why he made my all NBA team at one forward along with Bernard King and Kareem and Isaiah and Magic. McHale knocked it out of Ruin's hand. Jeff got it back. He missed. Jeff Malone the rebound. The shot. He hit. I like him. I liked him at Mississippi State. He was a tough competitor. And Mahorn and McHale are having words right now. Mc Rick Mahorn and Kevin McHale really started to have at one another. Oh, there is Rick Mahorn. Six foot eight. Don't let anybody say he's six ten. He's six eight, and he tips it at about two fifty. He told us today, he said, "I'm not six foot ten. I'm playing against all those giants." Kapicki in there now. Henderson draws the foul on the way to the hoop, and the foul is going to be on Frankie Johnson. That is his third, and Gerald Henderson will go to the free throw line. Henderson, 11 points. And Robert Parrish will check back into the game right now for the Boston Celtics. I think personally it's a little bit too early bringing him on a floor, Roger. Nine minutes in the game, he's got five. I thought maybe you'd go about the six-minute mark, but KC's 
Certainly knows a little bit more than I do. That's why I'm sitting with you and he's sitting over there on the sideline. Only the second time the Celtics have been to the foul line in the second half. That's only the third free throw for the Boston Celtics in the second half. Parrish missed the other two. Henderson showed some quickness in getting fouled on that play. Bullets cut that lead of the Celtics from 13 to 7 while Parrish was out of the game. It's now 80-71, a nine-point Boston lead. They don't foul a lot, Roger, as you and I talked about. They really uh, don't pressure the basketball, Washington, and therefore they're not going to give you a lot of free throw opportunities. They've got Parrish guarding Rulin. And you know where they're going. They're going right down into Mr. Rulin right now in the box. He's saying, get away from me. There's the double up. Frankie Johnson, four on the shot clock. Three-point land. Frankie Johnson hits! And he shows so much emotion and jubilation as he backpedals. Now we take a look at number 15. That is clutch time. Oh, he hit some big three-pointers three years ago against the Celtics in Boston in the playoff game. Bird outside and nothing but net. Larry Bird, six in the period, 14 on the night. And it's 82-74 Celtics. Well, the great ones just have that special ability, the Dr. J's, the Larry Bird's. They really rise in that time when your club needs a basket. Bird knocks it away from Kapicki. Bird goes to the deck. And it's going to be Celtics basketball. John Vanek calling the loose ball foul on Joe Kapicki as Larry Bird went to the deck as he made the steal. Dick, the last seven shots by Washington have been taken by Malone and Frankie Johnson. They're getting open because of the presence ruling on the floor. They're doubling them up, and he has the good presence on the floor to get the basketball, reverse it out to the open player. Just over eight minutes left to go. Kapicki leaves the game. Ballard, Mahorn, Rulin, Frankie Johnson, and Jeff Malone. Sobers has been on the bench. Bird outside, misses, and Rulin the rebound. He has nine. So much of a labor to try and score a bundle of points for Washington. They just have to get piecemeal basketball. Steal by Dennis Johnson, three on two. Henderson to DJ, and in. That's Boston Celtic basketball. Create the turnover, run off the missed shot, create the turnover, convert it, run up and down the floor. We haven't seen many fast breaks at all here all night long, Roger. And that's the way Washington wants it. They trail by 10. And Henderson, once again, getting a hand on the ball. Henderson's been very effective here in the second half. He's using his quickness to his advantage. Now a mismatch. Parrish outside Frankie Johnson over Robert Parrish. And Frankie Johnson now with seven points in the period. As a matter of fact, Frankie Johnson and Jeff Malone have all 11 of Washington's points. It's 84-76. Bring you up to date. Milwaukee leads Atlanta 75-74 after three, and Philly by 11, 80-69 over Jersey after three. McHale posting low. Now a double team with Malone. Knocked loose in the whistle. is going to be on Rick Mahorn, and that is his fourth. Mahorn looks at the official and says, now how can you call that on me? Well, he only mugged him, he beat him up, he clubbed him, and he said, who, oh, me? I didn't touch him. That was the fourth team foul on the Washington Bullets. Celtics have just two. Mahorn's a fighter, though. He's a real fighter. Bird. Fall away shot, in and out, and Mahorn the rebound. That's why Larry Bird's shooting percentages aren't so impressive, Roger. He has the tendency, and I've said it time and time again, I really question some of his shot selection on the floor. He's shooting over 50% from the floor in these three playoff games. Ballard wide open as they were given help to rule Given help to reverse the ball. Ballard wide open for the jumper. Six point Celtic lead with 6.10 to go. You check Larry's stats out, though, Roger, for the year. And he has many games where he really... Great oh, look move at that by goal. Robert Parrish. And he's fouled by Rick Mahorn. And that'll be five on Mahorn. Oh, this is a big league move right here. Parrish with the up and under. Good crossover step. And there comes the foul by Mahorn. I mean, he just has no other choice but to go up and get him. There are times where Larry will go through streaks and he'll go 0 for 6, 0 for 7, and then he'll come out and hit five in a row. He's a very streaky kind of long-range shooter. Maxwell comes in and Bird will sit down as Parrish goes to the line to shoot a pair. Parrish with 18 points, 9 rebounds. 
He's 8 of 12 from the floor, 2 of 4 from the foul line. Three times this year, he's had his season high of 19 rebounds, and he has 19 points. Boy, this is, this is where the teams that shoot 79-80% from the line beat the teams that shoot 70% when it comes down to six minutes in the game. Just ask Stan Olbeck yes. about that in game three, where his team shot nine for 21, an NBA team. They win that game if they make free throws. Ruin down the lane on the cut. He missed the easy one. Tough angle on that drive, though, Roger. Good move without the basketball. Normally, he puts that down, but it was really a tough angle to lay that on a glass. Eight point Celtic lead. Ricky Sobers will check in at the next opportunity. Parrish puts it to the floor. An air ball and Mahorn the rebound. He forced that shot rather than finding the open guy. Remember, when they're doubling up that basketball, they're leaving the furthest guy open because one guy has to be open on that double team. That's just pure mathematics. Celtics have a couple of fouls to waste here with 5.18 left to go in the game. Malone, the easy one. He missed it. Parrish the rebound. He pulled the string on it, Roger. It was too easy. Anderson, baseline. Sends it back to DG. Now the Celtics are trying to work the clock. Got to use some of the time. Very intelligent basketball. Want to get the good shot. They know they need the basketball. Maxwell, no call. Looking for a foul either way. No whistle. Ballard and Maxwell on the floor. Frankie Johnson takes it to the hole and draws the foul going in. It's going to be on Gerald Henderson. And on Henderson, his second. Johnson would be an excellent transition player going up and down the floor, but they don't have enough kind of speed and quickness to surround them to play that open court game, and therefore it restricts some of his ability. I think his numbers would be a lot higher as we look at Johnson going off the floor if he played in an open court game. Ricky Sobers has come in, so has Quinn Buckner, and with 4.48 left to go, Celtics the eight-point lead. Bullets over the limit. Celtics have one more foul to waste. Johnson, 7 of 11 from the floor and 1 of 3. Ruling over Parrish and him. He does a superb job of using that big body to protect himself and protect the basketball and keep away from the defensive player. First two points for Ruling in the final period. You'd su suspect with Parrish having five fouls, he would have done more offensively. They're doubling him up, though, Roger, forcing him to get the ball out of his hands. McHale down low. Three men over around him. The fallaway shot and in. And he hits the deck. Kevin McHale now with ten points. And Buckner now is down on the floor. Whoa. Buckner limping up the floor. Malone stepped out of bounds. It'll be Celtics basketball. And Buckner now is kneeling, and he gets back on his feet. There's a wet spot on the floor. Quinn Buckner saying there's a wet spot on the floor. Well, I'll tell you, Dick, that's a, just something like that. He was running up the floor, hit a wet spot, pulled muscle, sprained ankle. That's the first perspir perspiration. We've seen so many players injured in that kind of situation. Buckner's had a solid game on the floor here today, uh, Roger. He's really had a solid performance. Good leadership, hit the good open jump shot in the first half, made a couple of good steals. Celtics want a timeout with 4.03 left to go. They lead the Bullets by eight points. The NBA on ESPN will continue after this. Celtics lead it by eight, 88-80 with 4.03 left to go in the game. Dick, they took Frankie Johnson out. They brought Ricky Sobers in. Frankie had hit his last three shots, including a three-pointer. I think now that Gene Shue's really faced with a tough decision, he's going to have to think a little bit about going full-court pressure, and that would mean he'd have to get Frankie Johnson back on the floor for his quickness. It's very difficult for him to make that decision because in my preparation for the game today and talking to guys around the league, I found out they used the zone pressure to 2-2-1 two, two, on two or three occasions. Frankie Johnson is on the floor right now coming in. Gene Shu had to get him on the floor. They're going to do a little doubling up because they got to try to spring some loose balls and convert them for layups because time is beginning to become a vital, vital factor against Larry Bird still on the bench for the Boston Celtics. Parrish with five fouls. Dennis Johnson immediately doubled up. Buckner wide open. An air ball. Maxwell, though, saves it underneath. Two on the shot clock. Dennis Johnson gets it off, and the 24-second clock expires. 
Now, Hugh Holland's going over the score table. I think Buckner says he got a piece of the rim on his shot. Buckner did get a piece of the rim, and it should have started a new 24-second clock. However, I guess they felt it should have been a new 24. I thought, Roger, if it hits the rim and there is possession, a new clock begins. All right, Gene Shu is just going after John Vanek. I believe it did hit the rim. It just a, barely caught a piece of it. I, I thought it did. There's Buckner squaring up, shooting the jumper, as we said. Not really a good range, long-range shooter. He that, got the rim. That definitely got the rim. Parrish and Rulin in this game, both with 20 points and 11 rebounds. As Larry Bird and Gerald Henderson will check back in at the next opportunity. And it appears they're going to give the ball to the Washington Bullets. They missed that one. You just put that down as a missed call. They've only had, really, when you think about it, Roger, about four or five calls they've missed. And any time you're going to do a game, KC not certainly happy, but any time you're going to do a game of this caliber on the NBA level and you can walk away and say, I've only missed four or five calls, you've done a pretty good job. I like the thing that the college ref did in one of our ESPN college games where he came over and looked at the monitor to make sure. I don't want to see that in basketball. <laughs> I think human error is part of the game. Judgment's part of it. Looking inside to Rulin. Frankie Johnson. He misses and Parrish the rebound. By right, Robert Parrish, 20 points, 12 rebounds. And he's been the difference in this game. He's certainly been a real stalwart for him offensively and also his rebounding. Dennis Johnson. Nine on the shot clock, and he is fouled by Ricky Sobers. Dennis hangs up there with that jump shot to draw the contact so he can go to the free throw line. And it's amazing, Roger, when you look at his stats, his field goal percentage versus his, his free throw percentage. He's such an outstanding free throw shooter, so that demonstrates he has the follow through, he has the mechanical technique, yet his field goal percentage is pathetic. They shot 85% from the free throw line this year, and I think what's more impressive than that he led the Celtics and blocked shots 21 different times this year. That doesn't shock me. He's been doing it for wherever he's been. Seattle, he did it at Phoenix. Dennis Johnson, 5 of 7 from the floor. So, Dick, he came in shooting 34% over three games, and he has really picked it up. He's got five rebounds in this game, and give Dennis now 14 points. He's another one of those guys you talk about being a winner everywhere he's been. He just knows what it takes to win. 10 points, Celtic lead, 90 to 80, ruling but two points in the period. And reaching in, foul's going to be on Gerald Henderson. And they're trying to calm Gerald down because they don't need a technical foul right now. And they had him one to waste. Washington's not in the penalty yet with 251. Good foul. Good foul. Gerald was complaining like it wasn't a good foul. He reached. He didn't he know grabbed. it was a good foul. He right? grabbed. No. Ruling. And they're going to call the foul on Dennis Johnson. No, excuse me, on Robert Parrish. And that'll be his sixth. Rulin posting down inside, now gonna wheel across the lane. Parrish's call for bodying him up. I mean, if you wanna call that foul, you can call that all night long. I didn't see the foul. Rulin has scored just two points in this final period. Roger, you know, you said they have the sixth choice. I think Charlie Barkley saying bye-bye to Auburn. Can you imagine the round mound, Boy Gorge, Charles Barkley now challenging for a U.S. Olympic berth with Bobby Knight's team, joining Jeff Rulin and Rick Mahorn, put that body on his front Are line? Are you starting rumors again, Jeff? He's a human spaceship with the agility of Dr. J. Rulin now with 21 points. Parrish fouls out at the 244 mark with 20 points and 12 rebounds. Rulin makes them both. He has 22, and it's an eight-point Celtic lead, full-court pressure by the Bullets. There's the double-up we're talking about. Maxwell will bring it across the timeline. It's a great asset to have your forwards able to handle a basketball like Maxwell and Larry Bird. They give you another dimension on a floor, another ball handler. Bird, he hits. Larry Bird now with eight in the period, 16 on the night, and it's a 10-point Celtic lead. Excellent shot selection that time. He comes across the lane, gets into the paint, squares up and shoots the jumper. Sometimes he wants to shoot it from no man's land. Frankie Johnson, three-point land, in and out. And Maxwell, the rebound, the winner of this series, plays the winner of the New York-Detroit series. And with 2.05 to go, a 10-point lead, the Celtics will run that 24 down. It looks like it's going to be the golf course for the Washington Bullets and go back to the planning stages for next season. Maxwell 
leans in, blocked by Mahorn, four on the shot clock, air ball, and Maxwell screaming at Hugh Holland, sobers down at the other end, and in. Smart play by Larry Bird, rather than chopping him on the hand and giving him the three-point opportunity. Well, Bird's also got four fouls. They're running, jumping right now. In other words, wherever he dribbles the basketball, there's a guy running at him. They should find the open man, spread the court, post somebody in the middle, move the basketball. You don't want to play with it with the dribble. Seven on the shot clock. Dennis Johnson from 20 feet in and out, and Mahorn the rebound. Celtics with a eight-point lead, 117 to go. Look for the three-point shooters. Ricky Sobers is one of them. Bruland inside. And a good foul by McHale. He doesn't let him get it up. He's another three-point shooter. When he gets the ball down in a box and takes it to the goal, you got the great chance for three when Ruland starts to wheel and deal. Darren Day will check into the game now for the Washington Bullets. He's a rookie. Third-round pick from UCLA, number 25. Trying to get a little floor speed and quickness on the floor. Darren looked to me as I was telling him today at the shoot around. I thought he's put some weight on. I you mean, think all these guys have put weight on? You think Malone's put weight on? You think they're? It's, you know, Dick. They signed the big contract. They got money in their pocket. They can, I, th I think it's contagious when they look at Ruland and they look at Mahorn. They say, "Hey, we're playing with this team. All these guys that have all this beef. Maybe we should join them and put some beef on our body." 110 left to go. Timeout on the floor. Celtics lead it by seven. 92-85. Well, Dick Vitale back with you at the Capital Center in Landover, Maryland. 92-85, Celtics by seven with 110 to go. Ruling on the foul line with one more. Bullets start thinking about three-pointers. Ricky Sobers, 29 of 111 from three-point land. And, of course, Frankie Jackson, who is a prolific three-point shooter. They can't shoot it from out there. Ricky Sobers certainly has done it all through his career. He's a long, long-range shooter, and that's their only hope, Roger. Robert Parrish fouled out at the 244 mark. Gene Shue. Gene Shue's done such a great job in his years in the NBA. He also has an outstanding assistant in Bernie Bickers Bickerstaff. In fact, Bernie has done such a great job in 10 years. I feel he is ready for a head job somewhere. Maybe San Antonio should give him a call. He's overdue. Probably along with John Kilway, the two assistants in the league with the longest tenure as assistants without head jobs. Six-point game, 92-86. Just over a minute left to go. Naturally, Boston is going to use as much as the clock as possible. Remember, they're a great free throw shooting team, even though they haven't shot well in this series. Sobers reaches in and commits the foul, and Ricky Sobers his fourth. And he does a little dance. He does a little disco as he reaches in on him. Johnson's certainly not the guy you want to put on a foul line. He's a good free throw shooter. He's also a good defensive player because Dennis Johnson was named to the NBA All-Defensive First Team for the fifth time, and only Walt Frazier has ever claimed that sort of longevity in that particular spot. You mentioned defensive players. There's a guy in Milwaukee I think is the best defensive guard in basketball, and that's Sidney Moncrief, and he's also a total player, a great offensive player. What made me, what made me think about Sidney Moncrief? Johnson hits the first one. Dennis Johnson now has hit 5-5 five of five from the free throw line. It's so difficult, Roger, when you're Washington trying to get back. You're down seven. Now you're down eight. They just don't have enough firepower. They're going to get the ball at midcourt. Good timeout. Try to set up a three-point opportunity. 94-86. Celtics lead it by eight with 56 seconds to go. And we'll pause here. NBA basketball on ESPN will continue from the Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland, after this. Roger Tribal, Dick Vitale back with you. Coming into the final period, Larry Bird, Dick, had just eight points. He's got four field goals. He's got 16 now. And Dennis Johnson, who's hit four out of four from the foul line, he also has eight points. So it's been DJ and Larry Bird. And John Bannock's going to go over and uh, say, hey, Washington, you know, you have to come out of the huddle after the allotted amount of time. There's no doubt, though, Roger, you and I and everybody in basketball knows the Boston Celtics certainly are the quality team and the best team of this series. And I don't think it's any shocker that the fact that they're leading and up two games to one. 95-83, Philly leads New Jersey in the fourth. And if Philly would hold on and win that game, we would be in Philadelphia Thursday night for the fifth game of that series between the defending NBA champs. 
Remember in this series right here, Roger, the winner of this series plays the winner of the New York Knicks and the Detroit Pistons. Sobers trying to get the three-pointer, and it's short. Maxwell loses it. Rulin is fouled by McHale. Rulin always seems to have that great ability of being in the right place at the right time. A great court presence. 46 seconds left to go and an eight-point Celtic lead. Mikhail looks like he's, let's get this over with. I want to go to the locker room. I want to shower. I want to go back to the hotel, go back to Boston and relax. If indeed that uh, Thursday game is Philadelphia, New Jersey, it would be at 7.20 Eastern time. Greg and John with the NBA tonight. Jeff Ruin, who is at 4-4 from the foul line in this period, make it 5-5 five five and 7-8 of eight on the night. He's been a good free throw shooter down the stretch. This guy surpassed Sidney Moncrief uh, this year, playing the most minutes in the NBA. He's got great touch, follow through. 94-88, six-point lead with 43 to go. Maxwell couldn't believe it. I mean, Rulin laid a block on Maxwell, almost knocked him in about the fourth row. He looks at you, Hollins, and he says, what do I have to do to get to the foul line? Maxwell with just four points, and on Rulin, that is his fifth foul. And Kevin McHale will go to the line. You mentioned, Roger, that we'll be doing the Philadelphia game with New Jersey game five if, if they wins. prevail and win tonight. And that place in the city of brotherly love, you talk about rocking and rolling. I mean, that place would be absolutely bedlam. Six-point Celtic lead, and these are some big free throws here for Kevin McHale. I'd like to get it on the odd numbers, and he does. The odd numbers certainly presents tremendous problems because it gives you that extra possession that's needed to try and come back and beat you. 27 points for the Celtic bench, 10 for the Washington bench, all from Jeff Malone and fouled outside. Good foul by Gerald Henderson. Larry Bird really hobbling, Roger. I'm watching him backpedal and transition defensively. And there's a tendency for an injury. You really don't feel the effect until the next day. But if they win, they get some rest time and I'll have a chance to recuperate. Frankie Johnson will go to the foul line as he was going to take that shot from three-point land, and Henderson made sure he didn't get it away. And Frankie hits the first one. Well, I'm sure the Celtics are hoping that Detroit comes back and evens that series up, and it goes to five to give them a few days of rest. They're going to need it after this series as Joe Kapicki comes back in. Just like the Lakers have had an opportunity to rest now, uh, Pat Riley's gang certainly the dominant force out in the West with Magic, who's just a great, great player, along with Kareem, who's had a blue chip year. 30 seconds left to go, 96-90, and the foul in the backcourt. They just got it to Bird, and they just begged one of those rookies, oh. Day or Malone, to foul him. It really hurts. You're trying to apply pressure, and then you got shooters on the floor like Bird and Dennis Johnson, who are such plus free throw shooters. Frank Johnson, Bird, Frankie talk. Johnson, they're talking about, well, what are you going to do in the offseason, Frank? Enjoy it, Larry. I'll be Larry, Larry was probably asking if he played golf. Yeah. He said, hey, Frankie, you get to tee it up tomorrow. I don't. Frankie says, no, I can't play any golf. I shoot in the low 70s. If it gets any warmer, I can't play. Bird misses the first one. He's blaming it on Frank Johnson. He said, you broke my concentration. He said, Frank, you took my concentration away from me. 96-90, six-point Celtic lead, 29 to go. Bird hits one of the two. And the Washington Bullets would like to talk about it with 29 seconds left to go. And we'll return to the Capitol Center right after this. Fans in the nation's capital, as you see the, uh, the green sweaters and the uh, Celtics pennants, Roger, it's been nothing but a free throw shooting contest in the last minute. We haven't had a field goal for quite a while since, uh, as we look at Casey Jones again on the sideline, knowing his club's in command, they give him the easy deuce, don't want to foul him the three-point play. And they foul Dennis Johnson immediately with 23 seconds left to go, a five-point Celtic lead. That's the first basket that we just saw scored since Sober scored with a minute and 41 on the clock. It's been just back and forth to the foul line. Kind of reminds Celtics. me of a college game, the way they're fouling, walking back and forth, shooting free throws. You know, I'll tell you something, Dick. Any way you look at it, if you're a good basketball team and you're playing the Washington Bullets, and not to take anything away from them, because they, you know, they've done a, a job just to get to the playoffs, but they don't have the best record. And Gene Shue says, 
We'd like a more up-tempo style. There's no way you can look good against them. They make you look ugly, don't they? They want to get you down to their level of play, which is half-court basketball. And you know, with the 24-second clock, the fans love the beauty of the up-and-down transition game so the players can demonstrate their great skills and talents. They take that and negate that, and that's tremendous coaching because they are limited in personnel, have no bench. Dennis Johnson with the free throw. Sobers the three-pointer. He missed it, and it's off Maxwell. And it'll be Washington basketball with 20 seconds left. They trail by seven. It seems like the last minute or two has been an eternity. It's taken about 20 minutes, as a matter of fact, for the last couple of minutes. Ruland inside. Blocked by McHale. Sobers the three-pointer. Ballard will take it outside to Malone from three-point land. Ten seconds left to go. Ruling the easy two. It's classic that he gets the last deuce for Washington because he's had such a classic all-star year. Jeff Ruling. Six seconds left. The Boston Celtics will beat the Washington Bullets. And the Celtics will play the winner of the Detroit Pistons New York Knicks series. Game four at Madison Square Garden tomorrow night. As Casey Jones, I'm sure, I'll tell you what, he was very concerned about this series against the Washington Bullets. And he's going to breathe a little sigh of relief. Can take his guys home, give them a couple days rest, and they're going to have their hands full with the winner of that Knicks Pistons series. The Knicks Pistons series is something else. I mean, you're seeing some great. We took a look at Bob Cousy on the telecast back to Boston. The Knicks Detroit series has been outstanding basketball. You watch him, Bernard King, who's just having an explosive second half of the season. Henderson misses again, five seconds. Malone, and in. And that's it. The Boston Celtics, and there's a tussle on the floor. Oh, and Buckner just got decked. Henderson and Frankie Johnson are going at it. Really, Henderson un and Frankie Johnson are going at it. Really uncool for Roger. The game is over. Absolutely Oh, now we've got Sobers, Night. Sobers, and Dennis Johnson. And we were afraid of this. We talked about this before, that if this game got a little bit out of hand at the end as far as the score, that we could get some physical action. Very important that they keep the fans off the court, and they're doing a good job of that and separating a player. Players should get in the locker room. Get the guys in the locker room. Oh, you've got to be concerned about a couple of people who jumped in. Gwen Buckner really hit the deck. And Ricky Mahorn now with his arm around Frankie Johnson taking him away. Watch the left-hand side of the screen here now as the two teams are finally separated. And we'll see Frankie Johnson and Gerald Henderson start to wail on one another. Now the frustrations, Dick, of a long season on behalf of Frankie Johnson. I thought they did a good job of keeping the fans off the court and getting the players separated. Something ugly could have happened, Roger. So the Celtics beat the Washington Bullets 99-96. They win as best of five, three games to one. Dick, any comments now for the Celtics going in against the winner of the Pistons and the Knicks? The Celtics certainly, Roger, have been a Rolls-Royce basketball team all year long. I think they want to get to that up-tempo. They want to get up and down the floor, and they're going to get their chance, especially if they play Detroit. If they play New York, New York's had a lot of success with uh, uh, Boston. Remember, Larry Bird told us the toughest guy for him to play is Bernard King. Final score, once again, Boston Celtics beat the Washington Bullets 99-96. For Dick Vitale, I'm Roger Twible. Thanks for being with us at the Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland. Let's go back to the NBA tonight in Greg Gumbel.